Welcome to Manny's TV Talk, where we will talk about all of our favorite reality TV shows and news surrounding them. Grab a snack, a drink, and get comfortable because this starts now. Truth, timeline, everything to prove that you are a f***ing bully. I cannot believe it's her. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome. So listen, this is the first video of 2024. Happy New Year to all of you guys. I hope you guys are going to have a great year of happiness, health, and wealth. But you guys, we got to talk about this new episode of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. I don't think I've ever been more excited for a season finale ever. Like, even with all that Vanderpump Rules stuff, I've never really been as excited as I was for this finale of Salt Lake City Season 4. Let's get started, you guys, because this was shocking. So the episode starts with Night 4, and it starts with pure cinema, in my opinion. I mean, it's Heather Gay telling someone that she found out information that is bad. Heather says, quote, She is not who she says she is. She has plotted and profited from our lives in pain. We also then see some flash forwards to the dinner. So that was a great tease, but we go back eight hours earlier to see what led up to this. So, eight hours before, the women are waking up to a new day. Monica and Whitney were sleeping together. I didn't know that they were sharing rooms, but what had just happened the night before was that fight between Whitney and Heather. Y'all remember that at the bar where Whitney was screaming about Heather exploiting her sexuality, just a bunch of bullcrap. Usually things that Whitney always says. So Monica is asking if she's going to talk to Heather about it. She is also such a potster because she tells Whitney that Lisa was saying that Whitney was being dramatic last night. And of course that upset Whitney. So then after getting ready, Whitney goes to Heather's room to talk. Whitney apologizes because she says that she was just shocked because she had never read the book. But Heather says, wait a minute, I read the book to you. Like every part where you were in it. And I even took out a word that you didn't want me to put. So but Whitney says that it still hit different reading it. Heather actually read, read like the little passage in her confessional, which was just a few sentences and it really wasn't that big of a deal. But since Whitney was calm, she and Heather were able to talk and forgive each other for the night before and they even hugged. So then the group gets together and they go write some mopes. Now, poor Meredith. She was wearing not the best outfit and she hasn't driven a car in years maybe even decades so riding this motorcycle was crazy but they all ride and, and they go like to the road and they go to a little shopping center with many different stores so then they go shop heather angie and monica go together they're in a perfume shop and they are going to buy some stuff and heather and angie both forgot their credit cards back in the house so they had to ask monica if she could pay and they will pay her later but monica's card got declined which was really embarrassing for her but luckily she tried again and then it worked. Lisa Meredith and Whitney also bought some stuff in another store, but damn, it's crazy how a simple purchase can be like $700 to $900 so easily. They then get on the Sprinter to head back home. One hour later, Heather Gay gets a phone call. Someone found something out. We hear Heather say, are you kidding me right now? She says that she's trembling. She says, I cannot believe it's her. How can she do this to us? The producers hear this, so they barge into her room, but she says, no, you guys, get out. She pulls the camera guy out, like Nini style. So then four hours later, it is time for dinner. Heather had a look in her face that looks like she was very worried, but like I said, it's time for dinner and they go down. So they sit and the tables are set up in the shape of a triangle because it's like a Bermuda Triangle reference that Heather came up with. This was Heather's idea. She says that the Bermuda Triangle represents mysteries and unsolved stuff. She also brought the cloth dolls that they made when they went to that Mormon camp thing. So Heather says that they can each get someone else's doll and ask that person something about them like a little mystery that they have so Whitney starts by addressing Lisa so she tells Lisa that Monica told her that she had said that Whitney was being dramatic the night before and Whitney asks why is it when I do stuff it's dramatic but you were on top of the boat screaming at Meredith is that not dramatic too so they start to go back and forth over the word dramatic and Lisa says you know what we're all dramatic Meredith then addresses Heather she says that she wishes that Heather as her friend would have been more supportive to her in this trip when they were all coming for her over these mysterious DMs. She says that it hurts that Heather didn't believe her. And Heather says, well, they all believed Monica over her. Heather then says, yeah, you know, we all did believe Monica. Monica, 
why did we believe you? And Monica says, oh, well, because I had the proof and the evidence and it all added up. And Heather says, oh, so it had nothing to do with the truth? So then it's Heather's turn to address someone. She gets Meredith's doll, but she says that she doesn't really have a lot of questions for Meredith, but she does have some for Monica. Heather says that her mystery is, who is the real Monica? Heather says that she bonded with Monica this season early on because they were single mothers, they were funny, witty, they liked to have some fun, they were open books, or so she thought. But she doesn't think that's the real Monica. She says that the real Monica doesn't want to be their friend. She wants to profit from their lives and pain. She says, I know who you really are. And who you really are is... So you guys, pause on that. Because we then go back two hours before the dinner. Heather had a meeting on the beach with the OGs, Meredith, Lisa, and Whitney in which Heather started to cry. She says that they've come a long way, but Monica is not who she says she is. She's not their friend. She's someone who has schemed and worked to infiltrate the group. She said that this woman who they've tried to champion and defend is Reality Von Tees. Is Reality Von Tees. No. What? No. What? What the hell? What is that, y'all may ask? Well, it's an Instagram fan page that exposes and assassinates the character of these women, specifically the Salt Lake City housewives. And there's proof of the type of post that the Reality Bontes has posted. The ladies are in shock and they're asking Heather, how do you know this? And then the editors show flashbacks of all the lies and rumors and stuff that Monica has spread just this season alone and it makes sense heather thinks that monica uses information as warfare she says that she started to notice inconsistencies when she started to look at her beauty lab records and saw that they had three different monicas with three different birthdays that hadn't paid then the dm problem with meredith and how it was such a coincidence that monica got a dm about angie an hour before dinner but the thing Heather remembers the most is from last week. And if y'all go back to that recap, I caught on to that where Monica had a Freudian slip and said that she would make a fake account. So Heather called her assistant Tanisha, who work, who knows Monica. And Tanisha told her that Monica is reality Vontes and, had, and she had all the proof. Heather then sent this evidence to some friend of hers and then that's the phone call Heather had earlier in the episode. It was from that friend who had indeed confirmed that this was Monica Garcia. I mean, that's even her real name. But anyway, the ladies believed it because the Instagram page also posted video and audio leaks of Jen Shaw. And who else would have had those audio tapes? Obviously Monica because she was her assistant. Meredith was in tears because who does this? This is psycho behavior. And I mean, how could they not be scared? So Heather told them that at dinner she was going to confront her and expose her and they needed to have her back. So they all agreed. So now we understand why Meredith asked that question during dinner about the DMs to kind of circle back. Okay, so now that we know all of that context, let's go back to the triangle dinner. Heather says to Monica, I know who you are. You are the cyber bully troll reality Vontes. Heather says, I have receipts, proof, timeline, screenshots, everything to prove that you are a freaking bully and a troll and you don't deserve to be at this table because they've lived in fear of this account. And this whole time, it's been her. Monica is pretty much speechless. Y'all, y'all, y'all want to know what she said? She said, well, that's not true entirely what the hell what the hell well turns out that this girl is a liar because there's also video footage of monica that meredith was able to get where jen shaw and her monica were at meredith's store some years ago but wait a minute at the beginning of the season when monica went to meredith's store she said this is the first time i've come to your store so that was a lie lisa then screams and says she never wants to see Monica again. Lisa says that Monica and Jen used to do some drive-bys. And that's where Monica lost her stuff. And she... Because at first she was kind of composed when she got exposed. But then she says to Lisa, F you, you dumb little bitch. This became 
World War III, you guys. Angie then tried to say something, and Monica shut her up. She says, shut up, Angie, before I expose your involvement with Reality Vontes. Angie was mad, y'all. She almost threw something at her. Then Monica claims that she didn't create the account. She says that she was part of it, that there was other people, and that it was actually Tanisha who created it. So then they say, well, then what did you do? Own up to your part. What was your involvement with this? Monica then says that she's the one who recorded the videos of Jen and that's how they got to the account. So Lisa says, well, who knows if you videoed us and maybe you're going to post them when you're mad at us. Monica then says, shut up, you old leather Donald Trump hands, blah, 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 blah. It was horrible, y'all. But Monica says that she only used the account to expose Jen. That's it. But the other ladies, Whitney, Lisa, Meredith, and Heather are done because they've decided that, you know what, she lied. And then Monica had the audacity to tell Lisa to leave. So Heather gets up, she rises up, Lord, and she says, for years we were with Jen because we are ride or die. She says, let me tell you something about this circle of friends. We will have each other's back. Heather says that they were all tormented and had to protect Jen. She even had to defend her for the fact that she gave her a black eye. Woo! Wow! I, y'all, I had to be resuscitated. I had to be resuscitated after that. One year later, we now know Jen Shaw gave Heather the black eye, which we all kind of already knew, but the fact that she said it was shocking. But the point is, Heather had to lie for her, but she says that they're not willing to do that again. She says to Monica, pack your bags and go. Monica says, okay, and leaves, and that is the end. We then see the end cards, like what, what everyone's up to. And just as we thought it was over, Monica says in her confessional that there's more that y'all don't want to miss. Trust me, you will all want to hear it. She still had the nerve to say that. Then we see the trailer for the reunion. Okay, you guys, this episode was worth the wait. It was worth them not being here last week. But like I said, this, I'm going to say it, the best finale in Housewives history. I am willing to say that. As far as Monica, I told y'all from the moment she came on, I did not trust that girl. I didn't trust someone who slept with her brother-in-law. I didn't trust someone who set up her mother to come onto the show only to embarrass her and humiliate her. And I don't trust someone who worked for Jen Shaw. And a lot of y'all came for me talking about, Ugh, you don't know what it's like to have a bad relationship with your mom. I saw right through Monica. And y'all can go back to my reviews. I really did. I'm glad that she was exposed. I'm glad that Heather did what she had to do. And so I'm glad that the other ladies had her back. This it's crazy, you guys, and the whole time she was talking about her mom was like Ted Bundy, well, maybe that was some projection because, I'm sorry, having a burn page, Gossip Girl style, like A from Pretty Little Liars, that's some weird stuff, you guys, and I would not want to be around somebody who does something like that, that is just weird, like, ugh. So, you guys, that was the end of the season, what a season, Salt Lake City, let me tell you something, you guys, this better be nominated for some damn Emmy because it was so good. But anyway, I can't wait for the reunion. I'm sure that will be good. I really don't think Monica will be back. I mean, I think that... It, how can you come back from that? But anyway, you guys, let me know. What were your thoughts about this explosive finale? Did y'all think it was as good as I did? And what do you think about Monica? Are some of y'all still on her side? Or do you guys stand with the other girls? Let me know in the comments, you guys. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch y'all next time. You have a great one. Bye.